Hey, this is Lee Star with UX Emotion, and I'm gonna show you how to create a finger tap animation in After Effects. Okay, so why a finger tap animation? Well, sometimes when you're designing these UI animation projects, you have to show the sort of the user who's watching your videos, your projects, sort of where in the in the hardware of, of the screen itself, where in the real estate that interaction is happening. And so, so you wanna create like a little tap thing. People have their own, everybody does them uh, differently. People have been wanting me to share mine for a while, so that's what I'm doing right now. Okay, so here's what it's gonna look like is just this like little kind of cool flash right here. And the whole project, if I play it full screen, is gonna look like this, where it just sort of tap, and you know, there's like another one here. So if you want, you can download this uh, source file, this free After Effects file and uh, follow along. I can't include the whole UI animation here because it's one of my paid tutorials, but I will give you uh, these little radial things so you can have them um, and you can use them. Now, I'm first gonna walk you through sort of like what this is. I'm just kinda gonna zoom in here and show you like, the, just deconstruct what this is and then we're gonna do it step by step together. Okay, so one of the advantages here that's really cool is you can see it's on its own little layer piece that I can just hit Command D, duplicate, and I can slide it around and just position it wherever I want. That's a really, really cool thing. There's no position keyframes or anything attached to it. So it's really versatile. So what this is, this is just a radial shape. If you, you know, click here, it's just a radial shape. So I'll go through those step by step. But we basically, um, we basically create a, a radial shape here, and then we add a mask to it, and then we just do a couple very simple keyframes with a uh, scale, mask, and opacity. And that's really about it. I mean, I have, again, this is my own little thing. One of the great things about this is you can modify these keyframes here to um, extend it out for a tap and drag, but for now, we're just gonna do a basic tap in this one. Okay, so let's make it happen. So I'm just gonna hide these layers here. Um, well, actually, I'm first we'll show you real quick that what's going on here with this layer selected, you can see that this outer rim here is the actual mask itself. So with that happening, you can see that the actual, that there's a mask that's happening and, um, and is, turn that layer back on, and is sort of cutting out the inside of this shape to give it its kind of neat little, um, kind of, uh, uh, eroding it from the inside kind of effect, which I think is pretty slick. I, I kind of like it. So I'm just gonna hide this layer and we're gonna start, we're just gonna create a simple shape layer here. So go up here to the top and click on the shape tool, click on the ellipse tool, make sure your Bezier path is um, checked. If it's not, um, you'll get a parametric path and then we won't be able to use the shape as a mask. Um, well, we can, but it would be one extra step. So I'm just gonna click and drag um, I'm holding down the shift key. If I hold down command shift, it draws from the uh, center in a perfect circle. It doesn't really matter how big. It's, this isn't too precise and you can always resize it. Um, so if, if, you, if in yours, with the, uh, with the uh, fill and stroke, if you have these in different like settings, you can always click the color here to change that. I do white, sometimes I do like a light blue, but because this is light blue, I'm gonna do white for today. Um, no stroke. Um, you can always, if you have stroke on, don't forget you have to click the blue text here where it says the word fill or stroke to bring up the disable, this, uh, this arrow here. So it's just a simple fill. Secondly, I'm just gonna drop the opacity to uh, 35%. So I'm gonna hit Command Shift O and drop that to 35%. So that's it. Um, now the second thing you have to do is we're gonna take the shape path and copy it into a, a new mask. Now to do this requires a couple simple steps, but you have to do this very precisely or else it will mess up. So we're gonna go into our contents here and twirl down ellipse and where it says path one, I'm gonna click on that and hit copy. Don't hit where it says path one, not that, where it has to say path, copy that. Now I'm gonna make a new mask. So you can go up to layer new, uh, mask. I do it from the keyboard. Uh, layer new mask here. And this is gonna make a new, just default square mask. Don't freak out about that. If you twirl down, 
you'll see this masks has now appeared. And if you don't see it, you can just hit uh, like M on the keyboard for mask and click on where it says mask path, paste there. And you'll see that it should paste it perfectly in place. If you have moved this layer at all, it will totally screw up. So you can't move the layer whatsoever in order for this to work. So now that we have this in place, the only other thing left to do is notice that the anchor point here is in this awful place. After Effects is perfectly great at just, just being wretched about this. So whenever you draw a shape layer, it puts the anchor point in the middle of the canvas. Not in the middle of the shape, because that would be too awesome, but in the middle of the canvas itself. So with the anchor point here, the fastest way to get it back to the middle of your shape, because check it out, if, if uh, we want to scale it, it's just going to scale it around that point. We don't, nobody wants that, right? Nobody in the right mind wants that. So if you click this pan behind tool up here, and if you double click it and hold on the command key, I swear to God, it's the weirdest thing, but the keyboard, the anchor point will now go to the very middle of that shape. It's awesome. I'm really happy now that I learned that. I complain a little bit less about this, but as you can see, I do complain a little bit still. Okay, now we have this object set up. It's ready to go. The anchor point's in the right place. The opacity is good. Um, it's the color we want, and it's got this radial mask that is its own shape. The last thing we're going to do is, where it says mask here, if you hit M on the keyboard, where it says add, make it subtract. It's going to make it go away. It's going to be weird. You're going to wonder why I did that, but trust me, it'll be cool. Now let's drop in some keyframes. So the fastest way to do this is just from the keyboard. So I'm going to hit option um, M for mask. So that creates a new mask keyframe, option S for scale, and option T for transparency or opacity. So I have these three keyframes here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate them twice. So I can just hit copy here. I can select all. And if you don't see these, um, just hit U on your keyboard and you can bring them up that way and hit, and if that doesn't work, hit U again, just keep thwacking U until you see these keyframes. Now hit copy C, you can just click and drag and copy those. You can paste them and then move your playback head and then paste them again. So you have like kind of these three little columns here. This is great. Now the first thing, we're just gonna start from left to right and we're just gonna make it happen. So if you hold down the shift key, when, when you uh, click and drag your playback head, it, it snaps. And also J and K will snap your playback head. That makes it pretty easy to work. So under the opacity here, I can just double click this. I'm just going to say zero. And it's going to start off smaller. Let's say something like that. This one isn't too crazy precise, but, you know, we do what we can. I'm also going to delete this first mask keyframe up here and that'll be good. So it's just going to scale up and I'm going to, on this mask keyframe here, so now we're going to have the mask start really, really small so we can actually see this shape. So if I double click this, this right now, I can now transform this mask shape. So I'm going to just click and drag and if I hold down co command option shift, I can scale it all the way down from the very middle. And now I can see, and if I zoom in here, and if I'm just hitting uh, period and then space bar to click and drag, and I can make this really small to the point where you can't even really see it. So it's, it's you can see it's kind of like a little pixel there, but if you zoom out and it's so fast, nobody's ever going to see it. So now it's just kind of fading in. And you know what, we'll scale this down a little bit too. So I'm just putting my playback head right over the keyframe and I'm just scaling down and make it a little bigger. Okay, great. And then you can see that by default, it's already starting to grow and that mask is expanding out because we, we had the first one scrunching it down. So now it's just reverting back to the normal size. And what I'm gonna do on, these, on this third column here, I'm just gonna scale up a little bit more. And on this mask here, I'm gonna click this keyframe and just double click. And again, Command Shift Option, I'm just gonna pull this mask out a little bit more. And now we can see that we very quickly made a very, very simple, cool little thing here. It's great. It's totally, totally great. And now, you know, if I just hit the space bar, I can see that it's even, it's even timed pretty, you know, not too bad. Oh, sorry. Put this back here. 
can see that it's just, it's not timed too bad. It's a little fast, so maybe I'll just kind of space it out with a little bit more keyframes, but you want it to be pretty tight. You want it to be pretty tight. You know, that seems about right to my eye. And now, if you want, you, you can go to the end here and hit um, Option Right Bracket. will trim this layer down, and now it's just a little piece. I'll just delete these other ones. And you can see, if I hit U again to collapse it, I can actually place it wherever I want, which is extremely convenient in time or on the canvas. So I can click and drag, I can move it over, I can click this and duplicate it, slide it over in time. And for the second half of this uh, like animation here, where it you know comes back like this, I'm gonna say, you know what, let's put this just over here somewhere and let's get it timed right. So maybe right about you know, right before it starts, so something like this. You know, and then we're good to go. And then I've quickly made this this object. Oops, let me extend my work area here. I've quickly made this little object here that lets is a great, quick, simple, clean, professional tap gesture indicator. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I had fun showing you how to make this. Don't forget to download the source file and follow along, and I will see you in the next tutorial.